live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. And welcome back here in Las Vegas as theCUBE continues our coverage of VMworld, starting to wind down here on day three. Glad you're with us here on the live stream as we continue uh, gathering insights for you and uh, happy to share that with you. Along with John Furrier, I am John Wallace and we're joined now by Rami Katz, who is the Vice President of Product Management for EMC's Extreme IO. And Rami, uh, nice to have you with us. Thanks for taking nice the time. Nice to you. Uh, the show, for you, pretty exciting time, I, I think because of uh, for a number of reasons, but the one that really, I think, jumps out is the hands-on lab that you've got going on here, because you've got this real you know, test area here where it's all hands on deck, all things coming at you, a thousand people, maybe more, doing all kinds of different things. You're learning a lot, and they're seeing a lot. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so, so that's a good point. Uh, it, it all started up three years ago when it was, it, and it's a very nice story. Uh, before that, they used to have like, eight racks supporting the hands-on lab because it's such a huge infrastructure need for, you know, imagine hundreds of people coming simultaneously trying to provision and spawn in a new lab. And that, there's a, real, a lot of IOPS and performance requirement and so they needed a lot of infrastructure to support it. Uh, it all, uh, when we launched our technology, uh, VMware saw that and adapted this for the hands-on lab. They shrinked it to about half a rack and it was pretty successful, so they are doing it here for the third consecutive year. So imagine uh, or, that all of those people come in, wants to provision a, a lab, and they, they get it under the scene immediately. Well, we've been, I've been, I've, this is our seventh VM world, and I've been to the ones before, when the cube, before the cube was started, and the hands-on labs is by far the most popular. People love to go in there, and there's literally thousands of people, and a, vari a variety of different use cases of labs. So, it used to be they used to provision racks, and I used to see it, and I say to myself, they ship that, and it's like the full racks, big power supplies, over-provisioning, basically, infrastructure, to handle an unknown yep. capacity, or exactly. flash mob, if you will. And so they had to basically overprovision. That has been the data center design, and obviously the areas like network overprovision, you don't know, and that costs a lot for a customer. So it's an interesting example. So you guys have lowered the footprint. How's performance been? I'm, I'm sure the stream might all flash, it's been faster. But you're providing that dynamic environment where you're spinning up resources very, very fast. Is that the similar value proposition that you see for the customer? Absolutely. And uh, that, that's also part of the new announcement that we've made last week. We announced uh, the integration through the vCenter, through VRO, the Realize Orchestrator, when you can uh, do end-to-end -end workflow to provision, uh, to provision storage, uh, including copies. So imagine that the customer has the same catalog uh, of product that, uh, that you use here, but obviously it's not maybe a lab, but it can be like a production database that you want to provision to one of his developers for analytics, for reporting, for testing, for QA, and the end user just with a button click can create a copy of the database or, or whatever the customer um, would like him to do, and it gives him independent, the, the ability to be independent and for the storage guy to continue work on the infrastructure and move it forward. So we definitely see customers doing the same. So talk about the integration, uh, the announcement. Also there was a Microsoft component, I think, in the yes. announcement too, VMware yes. and Microsoft. Can you just unpack that a little bit further? What is, sure. Just explain for a minute yes. what that is a, yes. specifically about. Yeah, sure. So we, we have been pretty vocal about the ICDM, the all the copy sprawl that with the uh, extreme your purpose built technology, you can uh, create many copies as you like. Now, the underlying technology is great, but you really unleash the power of this technology when you give it to the users. So, and how do you give it to the users? Through the user uh, integration tools. So we have the v VRO to integrate it to the VMware admin. Uh, so he can create the copies through his tools, the vCenter, and we have it uh, available for the Microsoft user through uh, SCVMM, the Microsoft System Center, as well as uh, PowerShell, if, the, if he wants to script in Microsoft environment, this is available as well. So all of that was announced 
just last week. So what's the problem that does that solve? I mean, because that's, I mean, you guys have, you guys are well known for really been blazing performance, and I know, I've, you know we'll talk about it later, but I heard the Dell guys are super excited to get their hands on this on September 7th, or official day to the close, but in this, in, in this announcement, these enhancements, what problems are you solving? So the problem that we are solving is that in today's world, if a user, an end user, an application owner would like to get a copy of the database, he needs to talk to the storage admin to provision storage. That's a manual. You know, he needs to pick up the phone. Storage admin is probably doing something right right now, so he needs to t uh, stop doing then it. Then goes the voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> that, that can we happen as well. Five silly that, text. Come on, pick up your phone. Yeah. That can happen as well. Uh, or maybe say, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it in two weeks. Now, uh, if you, you give uh, the power to the user to do it by himself, then, you know, he doesn't need to talk to anybody. He and wants what do they now, use the data now. for? And what are they using the data for? Whatever they want, application support, yeah, is it so analytics? It can be test dev, it's a common use case. Uh, it can be analytics, reporting, QA. We have just a real customer like example, financial institution used to have just two copies because they were always uh, too hard uh, to maintain and to refresh uh, and, and labor intensive. Now they have 20 copies of the same database available to the users yeah, and that really accelerated their production cycle. What's the big architectural uh, advantage that Extreme IO has? What's the big innovation that you guys had? What makes you different? So Extreme IO was purpose built for Flash. So from ground up, we designed uh, the system uh, to, to best suit the new technology. Part of that is the scale out architecture that, uh, and, uh, that you really need you, you, you scale out in order to. Um, to get what Flash can give you, the enormous performance that Flash can give you. Uh, but that's only part of that. We, we des redesign all our copies technologies so you can get uh, multiple copies and get the same performance as you get for production. And that's really solved the problem of the copy sprawl that uh, m most of the data are created by copies. And on top of that, being able to do inline data services, compression, deduplication, really you creates huge efficiencies for the customers. You know, John, I was saying to um, um, Dave Vellante when we first met Stream.io, these guys did an amazing job. First of all, the big acquisition strategic for EMC, but the performance was the key. And, and when Flash was getting hyped, it was all about low latency. And I think that is an area we're seeing in other conversations from big data analytics as the DevOps and the cloud native world become more um, you know, proliferated. IT needs to have this fabric of just really fast data management around the databases. So you need blazing performance. Is that still the mission for you guys? I mean, as you guys go forward on the product management, what's on the roadmap? What are you guys working on? How are you going to go faster? Everyone wants more speed. So I think the, the faster and the IOPS and the speed and feeds, maybe this is where we started, but that's been pretty common and we have now, you know, we have about dozens that are doing, and, and in some use cases, they, they give pretty decent performance. But there are some differences. The difference is whether you are able to create more efficiencies uh, in uh, deduplication and compression is one, but re you really unleash it when you have uh, many copies, when you can support many copies, and to do all of that together, that's the, something that uh, we don't see anybody. That, that and that's valuable the to the customer. Absolutely, absolutely. And then in addition to high performance, the other side of the equation is, okay, uh, you know, what's it going to cost me? Um, because for a long time, you know, for a relatively long time, it costs relatively a lot. And at that price is coming down, you're able to provide high performance. So how much consideration is that for you uh, as you're looking at trying to squeeze a little more speed out of this, you're also trying to be cost efficient or cost mindful? So cost is coming down because the media cost is coming down, so, so, so that's one. Um, and, and, but the other one is really what the value that you are getting out of your system, right? If you are able to do, to have like 30 to one efficiency uh, by using copies, then really the cost of the hardware is less of an issue. Uh, so and, so it's paying for itself in that respect then. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and customers are seeing that. Customers are doing the cost analysis and are uh, seeing that they can, their efficiencies really save them money. 
I got to ask you about the Dell Technologies integration. Obviously, on September 7th, uh, that's the official date. And, you know, Michael Dell was talking to me last night at the vSAN event that Yang Bing uh, was putting on. Um, that it's closed, and he's all happy, and we kind of, you know, letting us know. He's got a big smile. So the Dell guys I talked to, and certainly in the hallway, some of the execs on the engineering side, they're excited to get their hands on Extreme I.O. So I know we've been waiting on China. That's now done. But the transitions have been going on. I know there's been a lot of work within EMC. David Goulden's team has, has been really working hard, and it's been a lot of great feedback. So I've got to ask you, what are they excited about? What do you guys see for synergies with Dell? Because Dell's got a lot of stuff in, the, in their arsenal, too. But now you bring in Extreme I.O. It's like a, a powertrain for them. It's a really interesting combination. Share some internal color, if you can. Oh, so first, we are super excited as well. We think the Dell deal is a tremendous opportunity for us. Uh, f first and foremost, we get tens of thousands of salespeople to, that will uh, go and sell Extreme IO, right? <laughs> uh, obviously, Dell is very strong in the supply chain, which uh, you mentioned cost, right? So, so that provides additional opportunity to cost reduction and bring some more cost benefits to customers. Uh, and you know, Dell has technology uh, and, and great technology. It doesn't have a product that is equivalent to Extreme I.O. And that's part of the excitement. They, they would like, their tens of thousands of people would like to go sell Extreme I.O. as well. So You're popular at new, <laughs> to much more other people. Now EMC had you, now it's a bigger pie. That's the plan, yeah. Okay, any and features now, that you can share on the roadmap? Uh, with the Dell. Come I on, can, give us a little I, bit of, come on, share something. I can a morsel of data. I can certainly ask you to stay tuned and hopefully <laughs> we'll uh, meet uh, very come soon. Come on, Rami, come on. We're very all friends. Soon. Come on. And, it's, live, uh, it's live on the internet. Hopefully, hopefully in a few months we'll meet again. How about, the, I mean, we talk about the lab and what people take away from it, you know, thousands of users. What do you take away from it? What, what do you learn out of that grand experiment that's going on here next door uh, that you can put into business? business practice? Yeah, so, so what we, we did take is that uh, we, we've seen this use case and we've seen how important it is to tie it to the end user. And that's part of the announcement that we made, how we, uh, we are pushing more and more, not only the underlying platform technology, but also all the integration point. We have integration with Oracle, with uh, SQL Server, with VMware, ov obviously. So we are pushing all the integration to the end user to give the end user the power to provision, the power to have more copies, the power to be more productive, because it gives value to customers. Yeah, do you find an aha like moment in there, though? Is there a time where somebody does something that it does surprise you, or, or you find out there's a new capability, or maybe a different capability that, that you weren't aware of before? I No surprises? We are always um, surprised to see how customers are using uh, our products. They certainly do things that uh, you know you couldn't think about uh, all of the things the customers will do with the product. But we are seeing, uh, we are learning from our customers what they can do, what the technology can do it's for them. It's the first time for them. It's a groundbreaking product. Yeah. It's you know so you you got to see it evolve, right? I mean, yeah. just let it let it bake out like in the oven. All those copy management and, and how customers are using and the number of copies they are using, it's something that we've seen, we, we, are, we, we are seeing customers using it more and more and uh, we, we, saw, we are learning from our customers and trying to, you know, you, my take is that in order to make our product better, you see how your customers are using, you see what they need, try to address their need, it's the best way to make the product better. So. Well, before we let you go, final chance to answer John's question from before. Anything you want to share with us? Didn't about? I answer? Well, you <laughs> did, but it was not a short and sweet. No, no. Rami, thanks for yeah. being with us. We, we appreciate the time and uh, a lot of fun there next door. Thank you. Thank you. The Cube coverage continues here from VMworld from Mandalay Bay right after this.